This time on the Racer X Show, it was Labor Day, which means Springfield Mile flat track action. And it was spectacular. We have Moto News talking about James Stewart, what's his future. And very soon, GNCC returns to action. We recap the season so far so you can get ready for the final push to the number one plate. And so much more, right now, only on the Racer X Show. Hello and welcome to the Racer X Show, presented by Chaparral Motorsports. I'm Greg White. Thanks for joining our highlight and news show. Motocross season is over, but don't despair, my friends. There's still flat track racing going on. GNCC's coming up. Hill climb so much more. So let's get going. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Chaparral Motorsports. Visit Chaparral Motorsports online at chapmoto.com. We'll start this week off with Dirt Track and the Springfield Mile Part 2. Springfield on Labor Day weekend has been a tradition in Dirt Track forever. All eyes were sharply focused on number 42, Villa Esparza, Crosley Radio's Brian Smith. He rips on the mile and is leading the championship. So it's up to second in points Jared Meese to put a stop to Smith's widening gap. And with only three races left, he had to do it right now. To the highlights we go. What makes Springfield so thrilling? Close racing, 130 miles per hour, as close as you like it. The players in this one, number 42, Smith, number two, Kenny Coolbeth, Zanotti Racing, number nine, Jared Meese, Rogers Racing, Las Vegas, Harley-Davidson, and number 55, Jake Shoemaker, on the Hot Shoe Motors USC Kawasaki. What matters the most in all of racing is what happens on the last lap. And this is a close one. Scotty Dubler with the call. Here they come. We got one more mile to decide the winner of the Springfield Mile. Here comes Smith and Coolback. Shoemaker takes a look up the outside. Has to back off early. Smith into turn number one. He's got Coolback right there in second. Meese in the third spot. Shoemaker in fourth, top four, pulling away. Wiles back there in fifth, and Jake Johnson in the sixth spot. Three riders trying to do it down the back straightaway. Who's going to back off? Who's going to lead them? Smith's got the lead. Here comes Coolback around the outside. Kenny Corbett uses the high line and he's pulling away right in the middle of three and four. The crowd comes to their feet. Here they come off of four. It's the king of cool. Kenny Corbett Jr. makes the move. So Harley Davidson gets one over on Kawasaki. Oh, by the way, the margin of victory, don't blink, one hundredth of a second. That's how you race him up, Kenny. Uh, just uh, a little bit of luck, good equipment, good people behind me, and uh, you know, being at the right spot at the right time. Um, you know, me and Jared, we both had the same idea, you know, going, going into the last five laps, it's just tag along with Brian. And uh, it, it, he's tough right here, and uh, he's a little bit slow in the corners, and uh, kind of hurts our Harleys uh, in the corners, so, uh, and it, his bike accelerates. So, uh, but these guys built me a horse today, and, uh, you know, up and down day. You know, we, uh, in uh, the dash, we kind of had a little mishap, and, uh, but we turned it around, and uh, this feels good. With about a month off until the penultimate round, both Mies and Smith have a lot to think about. While Johnson needs a Hail Mary to capture this one, anything is possible, folks. In the Pro Twins class, which, by the way, there are only two races in that mini championship, it was Kawasaki mounted number 17, Jared Vanderkoy, racing it up with number 24, Brandon Wilhelm, number 11, Molly Terry, who earlier won her heat race. Each time across the stripe, Vanderkoy was the leader, but with nine of 12 gone, strategy was setting in. Until in second place, Wilhelm had a problem. Terry has to check up to avoid him. And that was all the gap Vanderkoy needed to dash home for the win. So Molly Terry, her first pro race podium finish. But Vanderkoy wins the second and final Pro Twins race of the year. He won both Springfields. Yeah, it feels good to be up here again. Uh, won it last uh, in May, and uh, yeah, I just got a whole shot and uh, had fun with uh, Molly and uh, Brandon, and it just uh, pulled off for me. And uh, looked back after the checkered flag, and Brandon wasn't there, so uh, must have broke. It's too bad. So uh, yeah, it's a great day. I fast qualified, won the heat, won the main, so can't complain about nothing. Like I said at the beginning, only two races in this Pro Twins class. Now it's back to the singles at the end of September. So for now, I guess congratulations to Vanderkoy on this championship. Let's get you to some moto news. 
Last week, we told you about all the musical chairs and team changes that are taking place right now in the motocross world. But there is one name that we left out because of what would best be described as an uncertain future. The name of that rider, James Stewart. Ever since he was told by the FIM in late June that he's tested positive in early April for having an undeclared substance in his sample, which was widely recorded to be Adderall, an amphetamine that is often prescribed to patients with attention deficit disorder. Stewart and his Yoshimura Suzuki team have been on a roller coaster of a ride that's mostly been, well, unpleasant. Provisionally suspended by the FIM, Stewart asked for a hearing and continued to try and race in the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, which is not sanctioned by the FIM. But his results were mixed and he pulled out of the second moto at Spring Creek back in late July due to experiencing some dizziness. No one might have guessed that it was the last time we'd see Stewart this summer. Now that the time is coming for the final FIM hearing, which will likely determine whether or not Stewart will be allowed to race in the 2015 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship, which is co-sanctioned by the FIM, Stewart has not been talking with anyone in the motocross media. But he did report on his Instagram a couple weeks back that he was looking forward to participating in the one-off Red Bull Straight Rhythm event coming up at Pomona Speedway October 4th. And just after the last Outdoor National at Utah, which he didn't participate in, Stewart posted a simple message, quote, time to regroup and prepare for 2015. What's it all mean? Your guess is as good as mine. We'll keep you posted on James Stewart as this story continues to unfold. GNCC racing is some pretty simple stuff. Get some gnarly off-road riding, loop it about every 8 to 12 miles, and go racing. Between the arrows, of course. Then there's pit stops and pit strategy. But basically, whoever gets to the checkered flag first wins. Next weekend, September 6th and 7th, the Amsoil GNCC Racing Series presented by Maxxis is back in action. So far, the series has raced 9 of 13 rounds. And now, coming off the midsummer break, we've put together a short reminder of where we are and how we got here. The 2014 season landed at a new venue in Brunel, Florida. And as chance would have it, it was called the Mud Mucker GNCC. Named after the park, actually. In the XC1 motorcycles, the preseason chit chat was about last season's rivals, FMF KTM duo of Caleb Russell and Charlie Mullins. However, a first turn crash ended up collecting both riders giving the early lead to Paul Wibley. But by lap two, Mullins found the lead and the win. As for Russell, mechanical issues kept him off the podium as Josh Strang took the spot. The general GNCC in Georgia was one of the sloppiest events in recent memory. After dealing with mechanical issues in Florida, Caleb Russell came from fifth place on the first lap to take the win in the muddy Georgia clay, with mud specialist Jordan Ashburn returning to the podium, Paul Wibley third. Round three in Steel Creek in Morgantown, North Carolina, where the course was wet and rutted up, enough to make it a tough race. Well, maybe not for Caleb Russell, who was absolutely on rails and came away with a dominating win. Mullen second, edging out Strang for third. By round four at Big Buck, conditions were back to normal. And that was fine for Caleb Russell. He and Charlie Mullins were close. But it'd be Russell taking the win over Mullins, while Strang proved to be Mr. Consistent and snagged another podium, finishing third. Round five, the Dunlop Limestone 100, and drama for early race leader Caleb Russell. A hard crash mangled his motorcycle, and Russell could not contend for the win. So Charlie Mullins picked up the pieces with a W. Russell almost on the podium, but had to settle for fourth. Next up, Loretta Lynn's Ranch in Tennessee in round six, where a fierce three-hour battle between Russell and Mullins would end up with Mullins coming out on top for the second time in a row. Strang again third to round seven and Masontown, West Virginia. After back-to-back -back losses, Caleb Russell was on a mission with Mullins right behind him and Strang again on the podium. So at the halfway point, Mullins has the lead in the championship mainly because of Russell's problems in round one, but more ruckus yet to come. When round eight was done and dusted, it was Caleb Russell taking the win by a dominating two minutes and 42 seconds over Josh Strang in second place. Jordan Ashburn with a great performance in third but what about Mullins? A practice crash the week before resulted in badly broken wrists, meaning he couldn't race. And his chance at the title, all but done. 
So that leaves us at the Big Daddy Snowshoe. Even without Mullins pushing, Caleb Russell pulled out another big win. But this time it was Jordan Ashburn taking second, while Andrew DeLong finally landed the podium he's been looking for all season. Okay, off we go to hill climb. Here it is. Find a hill, get to the top as fast as you can, you have two shots at it, and your fastest time from either run scores you. Got it? Okay. To Muskegon, Michigan we go for a quick look at the fifth round of the AMA Pro Hill Climb National Championship. Before we get you too far into the highlights, let's take a listen to a hill climber in action. This is number two in the extreme class, Jay Salstrom, on his extreme bike. That run would put him fifth overall, but in the extreme class, it was all number one, John Kester, with this run. He put himself on top with a time of 5.618 seconds. Results for the extreme class, which is 451 cc's to 700 cc's on pump gas, unless you're running a push rod. Then you can go up to 750 cc's. For the pro extreme class, Salstrom, who is the unlimited champ, has two wins to Kester's three. That is the three point difference. Speaking of Salstrom, in the unlimited class, it's been a back and forth battle with Vincent Nuzzalilli, with Vincent not finishing off the podium yet. But this run, with 100% nitromethane Yamaha, Salstrom goes 5.131 for the win. Nuzzalilli in fourth, so no champagne for him. Unlimited class, 701 to unlimited, with nitro or alcohol or nitrous. Same for the push rods, but 751 cc's to unlimited for them. Two weeks ago, when the MotoGP World Championship left the Czech Republic, one question was answered. Is Marc Marquez beatable? Going for 11 wins in a row, the reigning world champ was kept off the podium. So, the question heading into round 12 at Silverstone, how would Marc Marquez react? Oh, he dominated, but not without a fierce fight with Yamaha's Jorge Lorenzo. American Nicky Hayden is still out recovering from wrist surgery. With six races to go, the battle now is for race wins. Can anyone not on a Honda win a race this year? We'll find out September 14th in Italy. Want to get out and watch some racing? We want you to this Sunday in New Berlin, New York. It's round 10 of the Amsoil GNCC series presented by Maxxis. I might even show up and race on Sunday in the C-Class. So can you. XC1 ATV Saturday, XC1 Motorcycles on Sunday. And if you don't go to GNCC this Sunday on television, September 7th, the best amateurs in the country duke it out for a national championship on NBCSN. It's the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Amateur National Motocross Championship at Loretta Lynn's, presented by Amsoil. At 1.30 p.m. East, 10.30 a.m. West, NBCSN, make sure you check it out. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Chaparral Motorsports. Visit Chaparral Motorsports online at chapmoto.com. Hey, do you know you can buy this cool shirt and a lot of cool Racer X stuff at racerxbrand.com? Yeah, so get there and shop around. Take a photo and Instagram it or tweet it of your Racer X stuff and we'll see what happens. Well, that's it for us. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. Check out all of our social media links, like us, follow us, all that kind of stuff. You can follow me personally on Twitter, it's at Greg White. And for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show, presented by Chaparral Motorsports and Racer TV, I'm Greg White. Remember, we are all racing all the time. Bye-bye. Woo, we're done. P1, let's pop some corks. <laughs>